Hello again, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I thought I'd take a little bit of time to tell you what's going on recently. Of course, I my last uh, my last video we talked about the Rose and and how he influenced my life as a youngster. I know I know there's plenty of bad things about him. You don't need to tell me all of them. I know them myself. Fact is, uh, I had a Pete Rose jersey for some while that I quit wearing just because I. I had a little trouble walking around with that guy's name on my back, but it doesn't change the fact I still have an autographed picture of him I got when I was a child, and it still it still means something to me because of what he meant to me as an athlete growing up and even in my early early adult years. I mean, he was still playing, and he had a great influence on my life, uh, and I... I <laughs> I, everybody wanted to be like Pete Rose. I did, and everybody else did, and that I knew at that time. So that's not surprising at all. But uh, recently, my wife and I went to the Barlow Fair. The Barlow Fair. The Barlow Fair is a, a place, it's about... All just less than five minutes away from where I went to high school. And, of course, I still know a lot of the people there. Barlow Fair is an independent fair. It's, uh, I believe it's the oldest independent fair in the entire state of Ohio. And, and I, of course, I was there as a teenager. I, everybody there knows me. Well, not everybody there, but a lot of people know me because my years at uh, working in, well, I went to high school there obviously it's a small town area that i live in and and people know you i actually sell a lot of books there I, i'll be honest with you the barlow fair i've been to the uh west virginia book festival i've been to the tucson festival of books and i have never sold as many books anywhere as i sell at the barlow fair the barlow fair a lot of people that come there buy books from me every year and they, they expect a lot of times that I'll have a new book every year. And they always come, a lot of them will come there and they say, what's your newest book? And a lot of them will buy it. And I sell a lot of books there every year off regular customers, people that come back every year looking for a new one. And uh, it's a great honor that people like your work and, and appreciate it that way. And, and I got to say, it's, a, it's always a pleasure going to Barlow Fair. This year, uh, we had had a, We'd had a drought for nearly a month and a half. It hadn't rained uh, anywhere around here. Fact is, I'm actually in a, actually I took my wife camping for a few days and we're in a state park right now in Ohio. And the simple truth is uh, we can't even start a campfire here because uh, uh, the, there's a ban on burning right now in the entire state. It's been so inundated with, uh, with heat and, and, and no rain and it's just been awful. Uh, we had a little bit of rain here last night, but to look at the ground, you wouldn't know. <laughs> you wouldn't know it was ever wet. It's been so dry here in this state for so long, this part of the state, uh, they won't even let you start a campfire, which kind of kind of lessens the fun of going camping. Uh, I know my wife really likes to start a campfire, and I do too, really, and, and uh, it's, it's a little cooler out here. The leaves are turning. It's beautiful out here, but uh, we can't do that right now. But uh, the Barlow Fair is something I really enjoy. I look forward to every year. One other thing about Barlow Fair that uh, I, I told you that we'd been having a drought. Well, it rained about every day at the Barlow Fair this year. I don't think there was, I know there wasn't. There wasn't a single day where it didn't rain. It was a muddy slop hole down there this week. And I'll show you a little bit of it. The wind blew a few times. And, picked up one tent and flipped it clear up in the air and flipped it over and sent it rolling down off the hill. And uh, a few other tents were beater, beaten and battered by the winds that we had there. And I was glad that our place was inside, so that was a good thing.
fair is something I enjoy and look forward to every year. And and uh, it just it's been a good place to sell books. Been good for me over the years, and I appreciate all these people that come. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, I'd like you to hit like and subscribe, and and come back and visit what I have here for you. I made no secret of my love for the Cincinnati Reds, and this week they. Uh, well, since we've last talked, they fired Dave, Dave Bell and hired Terry Francona as the new uh, Reds manager, which is a uh, hiring I'm really excited about. I'm looking forward to the 25, 2025 baseball season because I think they've got a manager that actually is a good manager, someone that cares about winning, and I think will bring a winning attitude to Cincinnati. And and probably will uh, crack the whip a little bit on players that maybe need need to uh, maybe need a whip cracked on them from time to time. Uh, they do something stupid, somebody needs to tell them about it. And I think Terry Francona is the one that may not do it in public, but he'll he'll tell them about it. He'll make players accountable for their actions on the field, and I think that'll make the Reds a much better team than they have been. I thought this week in our uh, Did You Know segment that I would mention to you that many of you have heard of Annie Oakley. She was a crack shot. She uh, traveled with Buffalo Bill, and she uh, was a shooter, well known for her shooting skills, and was in several high-profile competitions, but uh, Sitting Bull called her Little Sure Shot. There was a woman that was arrested, and she, she'd she been found guilty of stealing, stealing a man's trousers and then uh, using the money to buy cocaine. Well, the famous newspaper reporter, and I'm sure you've all heard of him, William Randolph Hearst, he reported in his newspapers that Annie Oakley had been found guilty of uh, <laughs> stealing and that she had been, she used it to pay for her cocaine habit. Well, Annie Oakley had never, knew she hadn't done that. She was aggravated about it, didn't want to see her uh, her reputation ruined. Annie Oakley sued William Randolph Hearst for defamation of character. William Randolph Hearst was one of the richest men in America, and the fact that anybody would go to court to sue him is <laughs> talk about taking on uh, the big guy. She did it, but she won her suit, won her defamation suit, and William Randolph Hearst had to print a retraction about that where he accused Annie Oakley of this. No, she hadn't done any of, of it. A woman was stealing her identity. <laughs> and, you know, you've heard of that now. Well, it happened then, too, but it wasn't, wasn't on the Internet. But they, in public, somebody had stole her identity. And Annie Oakley sued probably one of the wealthiest men in America. He would have been the Elon Musk of his time, William Randolph Hearst. And she sued him and won. Anyway, I thought that'd be a little bit of uh, a did you know that you hadn't heard about before. Anyway, I hope you'll stop back next week. Talk to you again soon. Bye now.